Hey guys, this is my review of the 160 Perfect Grade a Stray Red Gundam. Now, this is my first Perfect Grade kit, so by comparison to other Perfect Grades, I don't know anything about it. But, a little size comparison, yes, that is a 1100 scale Master Grade Wing Gundam. And he's right up to his thigh. One massive Gundam. There is really no good position for me to put this camera if I want to do a review because this Gundam is so large that there's really no place for me to move the camera back far enough to see it all. As you can see, the, the hands hold the beam sabers perfectly. The hands are jointed in every way, just like a human. They hold the beam saber perfectly. However, that is really the only thing I've found that they hold good. The sword does not hold well. The beam sabers are curved. The sword is, the handle of the sword is completely rectangular, so it's hard for them to hold the sword, even though that's the main thing that you're going to want to hold with it. As you can see, the difference as I uh, pull it out of his hand here. See, it's it's actually got this peg right here that squares into his hand, and it's rounded, so that you can, uh, he'll get a better grip of it. And until last night, I didn't know how good he could hold the beam savers. I really love his grip on the beam savers. But, I guess I'll get started on this review. I'll start off with the movement and everything. This Gundam kit took me three days to build, uh, almost no sleep. Now on the back of the head there's a switch you can turn the eyes on, and on the top of the head in the camera section, it doesn't light up, unfortunately. I would expect for the light to come through in that clear part. And on the back of the head, that is where the switch is, right there. And that switch is actually covered by this plate right here. And this is one of my biggest, uh, almost my biggest complaint about the kit, is that this piece right here that covers the back plate is actually a combination of three different pieces. Because this is a, is a hatch that's going to need to come off to turn the eyes off and on, I would prefer if it was one piece. I would glue it, but I don't feel like using glue on this kit. I did use glue on one part. I used it on the V-fin. The V-fin does not want to stay on. Because the peg that holds the V-fin on is very short. Head moves up and down can't move back or forward or side to side. Uh, it does rotate, but you can't get much of a rotation out of it because the he head is so long and you've got these parts right here that really restrict it from moving like that. You've got these shoulders right here that, that can move up and down, front and back on, the, on like a ball joint, almost, on both. These shoulder pieces right here aren't actually snapped into place. You just run the uh, the shoulder joint through it and into the shoulder, so it's really uh, the arm that's holding it into place. And you can move the arm 360 degrees, and right there you can actually see where the uh, shoulder is just being pegged through uh, the uh, shoulder armor. Now you can move the shoulders, well if you position the arms right, you can move the shoulders straight out. The arms are too wide to uh, position it this way and move them out. But as you move the arm right here, you can actually see that the pieces of armor are actually sliding apart to make it look like he's flexing his muscles almost. And his forearm bends in two locations right here. Well, actually, just that one location. He built. He bends at the elbow and at the forearm. His hand can rotate around, and then there's a little bit of wrist movement in here too, but it makes the, that plate want to fall out. As far as the chest goes, you can move the chest kind of around. It's not that big of a movement here, however, you're, you are definitely going to have pieces fall off on here. One of my greater complaints about this kit is actually that there are so many pieces on here 
that you've got to be very careful when dealing with it because you will definitely have a lot of pieces that are going to want to fall off. I don't even know how this goes back in here. Oh, it pops onto the side. Yeah, because there's so many kits here and this kit is supposed to move in a billion different ways. You are going to have a lot of pieces that are going to want to fall off. And what I find on here is that the armor pieces don't use the same peg system that the, you know, the, the circle peg system that the regular kits use. They use this, like, triangular uh, peg, and it, it just doesn't work, I don't find. I, I've never done any other master grades, but I just prefer the way that the armor snaps on to the real grades and the high, gr uh, perfect grade, uh, I mean, master grades. But he does have a cockpit in here. I'm not going to uh, try to pull it on, but but you pull it out and it swings up. My complaint about that is it doesn't swing up far enough for you to see the pilot or anything, but, but the pilot is inside. Now, the skirts, they do move independently. However, they don't move very far because of this piece here that is pegged into place and does not move. The back skirts move on a ball joint. There is this piece on the back here which is not supposed to move but does. Well, I guess it's supposed to move a little bit, but not as much as I just wanted to move just then, just a little bit. It moves. And this piece on his back here can come down and it, it can like just sit right here and there is like a peg on his back that you can stick something into, but as far as I know, there isn't really any expansions like to, to put like a jet pack on him or something, but I could be wrong. Also on his back you have a uh, you have two areas to put beam saber handles right there and right there and as far as the waist is concerned each side of the waist has this expandable port right here to put his katana put it right there as far as the legs go you can get perfect splits with him this is where it starts to get good as far as the articulation the legs have very good articulation so you can get perfect Splits. Perfect splits. And sorry, this guy's too big. I can't uh, fit them all on camera at once. The legs are very articulate when they bend. You see that the armor is sliding forward, the knees are sliding out, and they actually have this action of this piece right here moving. You gotta move it yourself for it to, to separate though, but it looks pretty cool still. Now the uh, the endoskeleton of this is very beautifully done. There are many things on here which uh, you don't see when it, when you finish building it. Unfortunately, uh, you can rotate the the ankle and the the shin pieces slide side to side. You move the uh, the ankle down. You you can see the hydraulics in there. I don't know if you can see the yeah. There they go right there. It's like that. And they also have hydraulics in the arms and different various places of the body that you can't see unfortunately. Now, as far as the accessories go, you get two of these knives right here. Fold out. I really don't like the way that these knives are designed. I've never seen the series of this or read the manga. Usually, like This is my big complaint about buying this kit is that usually I've seen everything that I buy model kits from. This is the first real model kit that I've uh, bought, which I had no feeling about the show that it came from because I haven't seen it. But this, uh, I don't like how the handle is so much shorter than the blade. If it's a pocket knife like thing, then it should at least come down to here. But, anyways, the beam saber blades are amazing. Just to put it into perspective, this is the beam saber from a 1 100 tunnel geese compared to this. See. You get two of those. Alright, sorry about this, but um, my camera had actually cut off when I was doing the weapons and accessories. Uh, so I gotta do it on my flip cam. <clears throat> this is his katana. And my main complaint about this katana is that you have to equip it blade side facing down just because uh, this piece right here flips on to this piece right here and then it just sets into his little waist part.
katanas are traditionally worn blade side up. You can actually uh, unhinge this from this piece right here, but there's actually a peg and a peg on this side which lock it into place in that blade facing down position. But you can pull the blade out. It's got a little catch on here. It feels like there's like rubber pads on the inside. I'm pretty sure that's what went there. It's been a little while since I built this kit, but it is a little bit slow pulling it out of there with that friction. The blade is beautiful. It's got a very uh, deep hamon that you can see right there. That's the wavy part if you're not familiar. Now this uh, can definitely pick up fingerprints very easily. If you keep putting it in and out of the saya over and over, it can start to wear away on the finish of the blade here. It's very shiny. I do have a scratch down here where it's been stuck in there because at the end of the saya there's really nothing to protect it. There's a beam saver here. I mean there's a, a beam rifle here which I've never actually worn in his hand but this is a melee type Gundam as far as I'm concerned, so I really have no interest in using the gun for it in display. But, the handle does rotate this way, so that you can hold it like that, with both arms. And it does have a scope, which you cannot position anywhere. And, uh, this part here actually comes off, and that part comes off, so that you can see the... I don't think this part here is supposed to come off, but it just does, because this kit has a ton of pieces that want to fall off, but you can see the mechanism, the fire mechanism. And uh, lastly you have the shield. This is the shield, it's a very beautiful looking shield. I really like the way that it looks, it's very thick, it's not just like one thin piece of plastic, it's a lot of pieces of plastic just stuck together layers on layers. And uh got this sliding piece in here that you can hold it with his hand and this part clips onto the arm and you can have it sit out like that off to the side and then there's this uh, piece right here that you can flip the visor in and out see where you got the uh... and there's actually a piece of clear plastic in there but that is all for this and that is all for the review I'll see you guys later and thanks for watching